to your eternity. Begin. This just exudes class already. This is like some kind of godlike being. You turn into a rock. Gotta start somewhere, right? And there's some life. The whole thing is so poetic. Here we have pain. Death. This is so bizarre but interesting. So much style. Right, awareness of pain. Baby's first steps. Hajimete kanjiru kaze no tsumeta saya yuki no niyoi o oboe nagara. Ate mo naku. Wandering aimlessly. Intros you can feel. <laughs> to your eternity. So I don't know anything about the show, but that was a beautiful intro. I'm loving the scope of it already. It sets a tone. <laughs> Definitely sets a mood. It's interesting that in this short little segment about the orb's existence on Earth, I guess it is, there's a clear focus on beauty or pleasure or something, and also pain. And also sort of just the, the rawness of experience, like new life or something like that. And there's this tightly wound connection between all of those things. I think because we're creatures that are wired for survival and are therefore very goal-oriented, there's this ongoing challenge of dealing with a world of just infinite inputs, right? Like we have to focus on things and that's a very targeted focus. And that means eliminating some of the things that are not directly relevant to our goals, you know, but well, that has obvious benefits, right? Or it wouldn't exist. There's a potential downside to that too, which I think can be like a numbness to raw experience. There would be a lot of things that would be really, really pure and amazing joys that we take for granted because they're they're sort of obvious. They're not things that need to be aimed at. They're just there. But one's own life and existence can sort of calcify or stagnate in that way. To see this orb be on Earth and experience like the chill of the wind, you know, and all these various facets of nature, you can feel it, but it's not something you normally think about. And interestingly, I think a lot of the time it's pain that brings a heightened awareness to those things. Pain in its own way, I think, is a kind of information. It's another message from the universe. And while I don't think pain is a prerequisite for pleasure or beauty or whatever, I think that a lot of times it's it's a trigger for it. One way I experience this a lot is with information, you know, like the truth can be painful. A lot of times the truth is painful because it threatens something we hold valuable. But the other side of that is that that might mean the, the idea or belief is weak. And actually, in my experience, the expulsion of that, while initially uncomfortable, ends up being beautiful. It ends up feeling freeing. And I often feel that in art as well in ways I can't really explain. Like sometimes the most beautiful things are also the most painful, if that makes sense. And I think in those instances, it's sometimes a raw look that causes that pain, but that raw look also is beautiful because you're actually getting it. You're actually listening. Because if we were somehow able to just fully take on everything in, it would be overwhelming what we would have to accept from that. But at the same time, that acceptance would be something like truth. Anyway, there's just a lot in the opening. I'm sure the orb will be explored more in the show. It's very interesting already. I'm also getting like real Xenogears vibes from this. But there are people. Oh. Oh, that's not Joanne or whatever you said. That is a space orb. <laughs> um, who's gonna tell him? Joanne is invigorated. Or Orb Joanne. Not tired at all. Yeah. Everything's exciting. The smell of fish. There's so much visual and like sensory information coming through so quickly. Dog eats better than me. <laughs> Speaking of pain, is that a metaphor? The fire going out? Are we in decline? The village is in tatters, right? Listen, if you're gonna meet anyone, it may as well be this guy. Giving you fish soup and a warm place to sleep. Sleep you can skip, it's kind of overrated. <laughs> the last one. Are you living your best life, son? Living in the, this skeleton of a village? Something tells me they're not coming back. What's going on in this world? Uh, I can't help but feel like he's barely holding it together. I mean, he's doing great, considering what, what seems like total isolation. Sounds perfect. What could what could go wrong? 
with his plan. It's extra sad knowing that the actual dog is dead? There, it, it's so interesting because it's like a lighthearted scene and this kid seems nice, but like it's pretty clear that everything has gone wrong. And there's so many mysteries about the world. Like I know nothing about it except that there are sort of ethereal heavenly things happening. Speaking of pleasure and pain, that's sort of continuing in this scene where here we got this beautiful image of a paradise full of fish and happy people and a reality of like this kid who's just like alone and barely scraping by and like animals are dying. And so he had to stay behind and watch like his relatives die. The music in this show is beautiful already. Oh, we got some kind of like enemies, some kind of danger. I feel like I'm the orb myself discovering this new world. What's behind the door? I hope it's better than a book. <laughs> nope. That's the face of someone trying to keep hope alive desperately. See, that's what happens. You spend time alive and you sort of get picky. If he was truly hungry, the fish had to be the best thing he ever tasted. There you go. Right for the brain. Did he just talk? Wait, wait, did I... Wait, what? But it's, I guess, close enough to dog speak that... <laughs> Yeah, he didn't catch it. Loneliness. Loneliness. I'm in credit to him for still being in good spirits with five years, was it? Of isolation. But I feel very nervous for him. I really feel like he's just on the on the edge. I barely made it through two weeks of quarantine. <laughs> and I had ample food. I mean, it was convenience store food, but it was food. I didn't have to fish for it. Just me and my orb wolf <laughs> on an adventure to paradise. Who knows what we'll find. <laughs> it's funny how attached I already am to this orb wolf. <laughs> orb wolf is so cool. <laughs> Oh no, oh no. Turn around. Go back to your fish hut. Alright, I thought it was gonna be a skull, so... Okay. Why am I so on edge? <laughs> I'm like on edge watching them start out on this journey. Yeah, I'm sure that'll last forever. We got another anime character in search of freedom. Beyond a wall. Are we gonna get to paradise today? And I wonder what set the orb out in motion, what the purpose of it was. Oh no. Well, the orb knows about wounds. I love how he's having full conversations with Orb Wolf. How much is he actually reading the wolf and how much is he just like... Going nuts. On that note, I wonder what took him so long to actually set out. It could just be that for most of this time, he's actually been taking care of people. Maybe he hasn't been fully alone that long. Another possibility, I guess, is that setting out on this journey would be terrifying because he's been using it as like his salvation. You know, if you're stuck in a place where you don't have what you need or you're suffering, which clearly he is for people who are like looking for a way out, I think the way through that is through like a dream, you know, or like a vision or something that keeps you going. It's like, well, this is why I'm doing it. One day I'm gonna have all the things that I wanted or all the things that I'm dreaming about. And the thought of that cannot be fully sustaining forever, but will get you by, you know? Steps towards that dream will fulfill you, I think, but the envisioning of the steps will not be as nourishing for the mind. So then there's a terror there of, well, what if it's not? You know, like, what if I don't? What if it's not the things that I, I think it is or what I want from it? What if I can't get it? And I think that's a really easy place to stay for a very long time. And so this is just me projecting a lot onto the character that's not really there, I don't think, but it's gotta be this very intense mix of absolute thrill and excitement to be on the journey finally, you know, to be feeling each step towards paradise, but also absolute terror that it's an unknown thing that could just totally be nothing. <laughs> I mean, the orb is chill. He's along for the ride. He's just experiencing. Uh-oh. Can it heal? I mean, he, he healed himself. It's not looking great. 
See, it's facial expressions like that that I feel like it's leaking out, you know? It's leaking out the negative sides of his sentiment. This is such a setup for disaster. Is it an X? Yeah. I don't know though. I feel like that means just in this state, you gotta go. There's no, there's just no turning back. To go back to that. Are those tombstones? How does he react? Oh no, this- oh no. The orb's been on Earth like five weeks and he's already picking up on how this is not right. Yeah, okay, there you go. Something had to give. I don't know. As much as it hurts, it's, it's kind of like... Yeah, I think there's a lot of good that can come out of looking at the unknown and trying to see the best of it. Not immediately assuming the worst and putting the highest amount of reality weight on the, the worst outcomes or the worst imaginations or ruminations we have about unknown events or the future or whatever. Actually, recently as a practice, I've been trying to always assume the best when it's a total unknown. It took me a long time to discover this, but I realized that somewhere along the way, I started equating my worst projections of the future or even the present with that which had the most likelihood of being true, which is not the case. A lot of times things are fine. You know, a lot of times things are way better than we imagine them. We can imagine all sorts of terrible things and our brain wants to give weight to it because that's where the danger lies and avoiding that danger is sort of essential for survival, but it doesn't make those things true. So I like the idea of having a positive attitude. I like the idea of trying to see the optimistic side of not assuming the worst, of using images and dreams and fantasies to sort of like motivate oneself to get through some of the darkest times or find the will to you know, do what you need to do, etc. But also you don't want to be delusional. Well, you don't want to assume the worst when it's not evident. You don't want to reject the truth. You know, you don't want to deny things that actually are happening. If a tragedy happens, then you grieve for it. You know, you don't pretend it doesn't exist or never happened. It's a moving scene because you can tell how hard he's been trying to hold everything together all this time. So this expression doesn't feel like a mental crack. It feels healthy. It feels like it's something he needs. It feels like acceptance. You know what I mean? And then I think the next thing is, okay, so we've incorporated this new information and it sucks. Now what's next? That's sort of where the positivity is more useful then like everything's gonna be fine all the time always you know <coughs> this is all very interesting isn't it orb don't worry about joanne the leg is really the issue i feel I love their, their bond already. Oh. He's experiencing concern for others. He's a kind boy. Heal him, Orb. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I feel like that would stop a lot of people, that experience. Yeah, I'm with Orb Wolf. This is very concerning. No, don't make any last requests. You stop it. It just might. Heal him, Orb Wolf. What? What? What is going on? Is he becoming the the boy? He took the wolf's form. Are, are we in heaven? I'm a little bit confused. What's going on? How much does he take with him? It when it does this. Wow. Oh man, to what end, I wonder? He's just like a being that absorbs life. That was insane. So, like I said, I know nothing about the show. It was really an amazing episode and I got attached to 
the boy, whose name I don't know, but it seems like it was just like a, a vignette almost tied together by the, the orb being. And I don't know where it's going to go, but it's, it's kind of a fun template because it allows a different kind of lens into people in life. We are sort of the, the a visitor, you know what I mean? We see things through the orb, and is that what it's going to be? Is it the orb's journey through existence? You know what I mean? And just as a little short story, the boy story was pretty moving and incredibly powerful. I mean, I got attached to him in the one episode, and I really wanted him to make it, even though I kind of knew there was nowhere to make it too. I was hoping that he would find a way to go beyond that and succeed where others had failed. But who knows what this world is even. So a pretty stellar first episode. I love how the intro and the dual like beauty pain nature of the wolf sort of foreshadowed the, the rest of the episode, which is the boy being injured, the boy being a person of beauty, but then absolute tragedy at the end. Although still sort of dying on his feet, not in a literal sense, but you get what I mean. And that's just like the story and thematic beats of the episode. Just visually, it's amazing. It seems like it's in its own league in terms of sensory information, the sensory experience, the music, the visuals. You can like smell it and feel it. There's a lot of really great attention to detail and color and things like that. Although in this episode, the color was largely white, but it works. So really something of beauty. You know, it's rare that I feel moved by a first episode, but here we are. So yeah, I basically made up my mind that I'm definitely going to watch this show. It's just a matter of when. So yeah, thank you for checking out the first episode of To Your Eternity. Hope to see you guys at some point <laughs> sooner rather than later for episode two. Thank you.